these little labradoodle puppies are six days old yeah they're six i know this is the week one update so what's going on we just have a little bit of a scheduling conflict that means we are filming our week one litter update video for these petite australian labradoodle puppies one day early these are the shadow pebble puppies and this is their mama labradoodle rowan today's video we are going to go through what the puppies have been doing the past week we're going to talk about mama labradoodle rowan and how she's doing and we're also going to talk about how to get yourself ready to welcome your new van isle puppy to your home Hi, I'm Claire from Van Isle Labradoodles, and these puppies, there are nine of them, which is a heck of a lot of puppies for one little mama. And look at them all cozied up here with mom. Now, of course, there are not nine spots at this milk bar uh, per side. There are nine spots, more than nine spots when we flip over. But look at how they've got themselves all arranged here. And look at this little one here. This is silver collar, I believe. Yep, there we are just going for glory here on the back place, which is the best place to get the most milk and underneath Mama Rowan's leg. Now, I hope you guys are all following us on Facebook. Uh, we posted a couple of reels and some pictures because there is almost always a puppy underneath Rowan's tail snuggled up under her hind leg like this. We also find the puppies quite often in between her front paws and right up underneath her chin. Rowan is doing such a great job. She, this is her first litter and she is handling having nine puppies with real no problem at all. She's completely comfortable. She's relaxed. And now that her milk has come in, we don't hear any fussing at all from the puppies. When they were first born and they were not all able to figure out how to get onto the milk bar. There was some fussing. But you know, remarkably, puppies are incredible. They can't see, they can't hear, they can't do anything except for use their noses. And they all manage to figure out how to rotate so that some are nursing and some are sleeping all on their own. We didn't have to help with that. Now, lots of times you will hear breeders talking about how they come in and they rotate the puppies and they make sure that the big puppies start off on the back two mammary glands in order to drain them off a bit and so on and so forth. Uh, we have not had to do that really with anyone. Our puppies and our moms have always sorted it out on their own. And that's how it would be were they on their own. Normally there wouldn't be somebody here attending to them at all. Uh, so they're doing great that way. Now this week we had Rowan to the vet. Now you might think that dogs go to the vet after they have babies, but they don't. Um, the vet is the last place we want to take our moms uh, because of course the vet is where sick dogs go. And normally if everything's going well, there is no need to go to the vet. But what happened was Rowan got a temperature. And so as I could tell that she was not acting her usual self and that something was wrong by her behavior. And so I came in and felt here right under her ear and of course it's warm because she's in a very warm room and she's feeding all these babies who are all cuddled up around her but underneath her ear was blistering hot so then I took a look at her gums and I did a little press with my finger and that was good the circulation was there and there was no tackiness so that's a good indication that things are not terribly wrong and then I just took her paw and felt here in between her pads and these were sweaty and now we're in the same temperature room obviously there's no sweat in there her ear is warm but it's not hot so after observing all of that then I did take her temperature and with a dog temperatures are always taken rectally 
Uh, so she did have a temperature. It was uh, higher than it should have been and I took her temperature again four hours later and it was spiked. Uh, so this was four o'clock in the morning when it had spiked uh, to the point where I was concerned enough that we thought we might have to go to emergency. Uh, but she was eating and she was drinking she was drinking a lot and she wasn't dehydrated and in case you're wondering how you know if a, a dog is dehydrated you just take their skin on their back here you lift it up and see how it snaps right back down that means she's fully hydrated if that skin took a while to come back down I don't think anybody will do it here because they're all hydrated uh, then you know that there's a bit of a problem with hydration so the other thing that was going on was she had a little bit of trembling in this back leg here. And the trembling is usually an indication of pain. So I did a quick exam of her because I was concerned, well, was there a dead puppy? Uh, was there perhaps a retained placenta that was causing her an infection? What the heck was going on? Uh, so I phoned to emergency to tell them what was going on. And is, as is often the court case on Vancouver Island, um, the emergency I prefer to go to, which is Waves in Langford, uh, they were not encouraging of us coming and indicating that he had a multi-hour wait time. Uh, so this is not good for Rowan and this is not good for the puppies. It wasn't life-threatening at this point. It was just to the point where I was concerned about her fever continuing to go up. Now I have meds here that I can give her to reverse that. It's just I don't like to do that without a vet looking at my dog yeah I've got experience yes I know what drug to use and when but I always prefer to consult with a vet first um, and the drug that takes the temperature down is one you have to be cautious with when the girl is lactating it's totally fine to use it but you want to use it very sparingly if a girl has a cesarean this is the drug that they get afterwards so it reduces inflammation and reduces their fever and it also kills pain so then I phoned the other emergency and they were able to see her but in the meantime they let me speak to the vet and uh, together we decided that it wasn't anything that warranted going uh, on a one hour drive probably waiting a couple hours considering it was four in the morning and my vet was going to be open in four hours uh, so I just gave her a very general antibiotic which is very gentle completely safe for the puppies the puppies themselves could take it were they uh, ill and that calmed everything down uh, we got her temperature stabilized it was still high but we got it stabilized and then in the morning I phoned my vet and I was there um, shortly after and as often happens when we got there and while I was waiting for our vet to come out I had her on the exam table and so what we did was Reynolds and I went together we had the uh, it was a very warm day and we made sure there was no air conditioning on in the car we have discs that we can put in the microwave and put under a towel to provide extra warmth for the puppies to lie on and then Rowan just uh, was in the back and uh, we have an SUV so we put the seats down and then I also rode in the back with her. That way the puppies are all with mom for as long as possible. And then I take my own blanket so that Rowan is not going to be on the table and I don't let her walk into the clinic. I pick her up out of the car and carry her in and I wait until um, it's our turn. So that was all smooth and while I was waiting for Ian, our vet, to come out, I'm just giving her a little pet like this and lo and behold, what do I find? A lump right around here and it was about this big and it was probably about that deep and it was fairly hard so I was as soon as he came in I said it's okay I know what it is now she has mastitis when she was spiking her fever and I had examined her that lump was not there because that's the first thing you think of is either mastitis or eclampsia and there was nothing there so that uh, mastitis blockage grew and developed between four in the morning and uh, was about 11 when I was at the vet. So that was fine. We did a slide. We expressed some milk, did a slide just to confirm. And sure enough, that was what was going on. 
So by then her fever was coming down uh, because I had given her the antibiotic here at home. Uh, so it was already starting to do its job. Uh, so um, I got more antibiotics so that I had enough on hand. Um, and then the treatment is a little bit of antibiotics and a lot of holistic care. So there's two things we do holistically. One is green cabbage. All you do is take the leaves, crush it in your hand, and then you hold it just on the area. Now this is a little bit challenging when you have a girl with nine puppies because the last thing you want to do is reduce her milk supply. And if you look at Rowan, you can see she's not got great big mammary glands like <coughs> some of our moms do. Uh, it, in fact, she doesn't even look like she's got anything except for at the back, uh, but uh, she does. You can just squeeze any of the nipples and milk will come out. She does run out sometimes, but she has enough milk everywhere else that it will still come out. This one's almost empty. So you want to be very careful with the cabbage. And then I have another product that's called Phytolaca. And it is in a spray. So you spray it right on the area, massage it in, and then you also spray it in her mouth. Now the Phytolaca is mixed with vodka. Dogs do not like vodka. And so whenever Rowan was getting it in her mouth, there was kind of face going on. She was not fond of that. And within 24, well, probably 36 hours, everything was cleared up. It was fine. You could look at the milk, the consistency and the color was back to normal and all was well. And we also got her half sister Raven to help us out. We borrowed one of her puppies. Oh no, we didn't. It wasn't Raven's. It was actually her friend over here, Anise's puppy. We had to use one of Raven's with Anise because Anise um, had uh, a nipple that wouldn't pop out. So we took one of Anise's puppies and we put them on the impacted uh, spot. And we let that puppy nurse until he was going to burst. And that really helped as well, because that helped to get everything flowing around here. It was all clogged up and yucky. And so now you can see everything soft and moving. There's, there's no problem at all. So that was our excitement uh, for the week. Rowan is still eating really well. Uh, she is very attentive to her puppies. Uh, she likes it if we come and sit with her to feed her. She prefers if we feed her by hand. You may have seen the, the video that we posted on Facebook all about that. Um, and that's totally fine. Um, and who, it's totally, if that's what she prefers. She doesn't even sit up yet to eat because she just doesn't like to leave the puppies. It's still a challenge to get her to get up and out to go to the bathroom. And for whatever reason, she prefers the, to drink the water out of our water garden, which is totally safe for pets, of course, rather than the water that's here in her dish. And I think that's because she doesn't get out of the box. We can't leave the bowl of water in here because the puppy could fall in and drown. But as far as I can see, because we do watch her almost 24-7, she never leaves this box. She's not comfortable enough to do that yet. She's just totally dedicated to the babies. Now you see she's sound asleep right now. Well, she's probably not sound asleep, but she's definitely sleeping. And that's because that's what she likes to do. And she's like, oh good, mom's in here. I don't need to worry. She'll keep an eye on the babies and I can catch a, a little bit of a rest. So the, for the babies, what have they been doing this week? Well, this, eating, sleeping, getting cuter by the minute, eating, sleeping, getting cuter. We posted a video today on Facebook that shows the babies while they're sleeping and talks, ab uh, talks about what it means when they're doing their herky-jerky movements. So uh, if you get a chance, take a look at that. It's in our reels um, and that will explain to you how important it is that they are twitching around while they're while they're sleeping. And what's going to happen over the next week? Well, in our next update at week two, we may see some of their eyes opening. Now, when we go through the puppies and we go through their birth weights this week, you'll see that none of them have doubled their birth weights. Their, rate, their weight gain rate is a little slower than we saw, for instance, with Anises. And that's because we have nine puppies. Um, Rowan could have a bit more milk, but if we try to boost that, we would use um, a drug called, or it's not a drug, uh, an herb called fenugreek. I gave her fenugreek when she first had the puppies, and then that was when we got the lump of mastitis. 
That can happen sometimes when you're trying to increase milk production. So I'm not comfortable enough to try to do anything to increase her milk production. I just want her to be eating well, which she is, and the puppies to be nursing almost constantly, which they are. And that will suffice. If they don't gain weight super rapidly, there's nothing wrong with that. All I'm checking is to make sure nobody's losing. And if you look at this one's tummy here or this tummy, you can see that these puppies are every bit as plump as a puppy normally is. So there's, they're not lacking in anything. Were they hungry and going without? we would hear them. Believe me, they can set up a squawk like you wouldn't believe. If uh, Rowan happens to step on one or sits on one, uh, you can hear it for quite a long distance. Babies can make a lot of racket. If you have been a mom or a dad, you know how much your newborn can squawk and you know how loud it is. You always worry that the neighbors are being woken up when your baby wakes up. Very similar to this. So we would have nine puppies all really complaining if they weren't getting enough nutrition. So I'm quite confident they're all doing well. Their coats are glossy. Uh, Rowan's in great shape. Sorry, Rowan. Nothing um, is untoward whatsoever. And I'm quite happy with how everyone is doing. So now I want to talk briefly about getting ready for your puppy. You're going to get a video that goes through this in quite a bit more detail, but mostly what I want everyone to do on this list is as a family or uh, with your friends, if you're single, take a good walk around your house and start imagining it with a puppy in it. Um, remembering that puppies should not be anywhere near stairs. Uh, you don't want them using the stairs when they're young because it's not good for their joints. Um, you also don't want them to fall down the stairs. You don't want them to be near any danger areas um, and a danger area may include your child's room uh, if your child doesn't remember to pick everything up. It could be dangerous for the puppy if they get into something they ought not to, uh, but it also could be dangerous because your puppy might eat your child's iPad or some other incredibly expensive to replace item. Normally puppies only destroy things that are very expensive. So as an adult, you also want to figure out where am I going to put my remote control? Where am I going to park my cell phone? Where am I going to put my glasses down? Where am I going to put my diamond earrings down? Things like that. You want to make sure that you have everything up really high. And don't think that your puppy can, is, it, that this would be a good height. This is the kind of height we're looking at. This is about three and a half feet. That's about the minimum you want things to be at. So if you have a coffee table, that's too low. Or if you have an end table by your uh, favorite chair that you sit in, that will be too low. Puppies can amazingly be agile enough to get onto your chair and over onto that table and into trouble in a heartbeat. You also want to check out for where there's some cords for if you have your computers, your televisions, things like that, and work out how you're going to keep your puppy away from those. And you want to kind of work out the zone. Where does it make the most sense for your puppy to be? You're not going to give them free run of your whole house when you come home. Uh, that's not good for you and that's not good for your puppy. So you want to figure out a good way that you can easily contain your puppy. Of course, you can always use the X-Pen that's in your puppy starter kit. That is the easiest way of all. That's how we do everything when we have a puppy. We either use it in a round format and the puppy's in it, or we have it spread out and the puppy is contained in an area. We have an open concept home, so there's no doors um, and hardly any walls. So we use the X-Pen to, to create a room within our open area. And most important of all is to work out what door you're going to use for your puppy to go in and out of to go to the bathroom. That's really key. Somewhere that's easy to get to from wherever the puppy's um, area is, a door that's easy and open to close for children if you have one, and of course close to where it is you want them to go to the bathroom. And if you're really lucky, it'll be a spot where you can hang, hang their leash and their collar because you do not want your uh, dog to be wearing a collar or a harness in the house. They're both really dangerous. Um, so somewhere where you can easily get those on them and get them out the door quickly. 
And the other thing you're going to want to start to do is have a really fun time and think of a name for your puppy. Now try to avoid the more common names. If you really love names that are popular, then they're popular for a reason because people love them. But just remember if you use a super popular name and you're somewhere and you call your dog, you're gonna get a whole lot of dogs coming because they'll have no idea that you don't mean them. It's also a little harder for your dog to know that that is associated with them. So when you're in puppy school and there's say five Lucy's and everyone's saying Lucy, 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 it's very hard for your puppy to make the connection that, oh, Lucy is me, that's me. Whereas if you have a name that's a bit more unique like Anise or Rowan, your dog will know, oh, that's me, because there's nobody else with those names. Anissa's parents call her Annie. Uh, Rowan, we call all sorts of things. We call her Row, Row, Row Your Boat. We call her Row, Row a lot. Uh, so you can always shorten him. So something you can have fun with, and you can have a playful name for your dog, as well as a serious one when you really want them to be like, hey, I'm serious, I need you to pay attention to me. So they know when you use that full name that, oh, I better pay attention. So it's always great fun. Try to pick a name that has some really good meaning for you, um, a name that's easy to remember. If you have children, an easy name for them to pronounce and say, um, I have dog names that are different, that are hard for people to know how to spell, uh, but I get away with that because I'm a breeder. Uh, so like we have Sahani, which is not a common name. Rowan's easy to spell. Anise, a lot of people don't know how to say it, don't know what it means, don't know how to spell it, uh, but Annie's pretty easy. Um, so just keep those things in, in mind. And a lot of this is going to depend on if you have kids or not, because if you have kids, you want to make sure that the name is fun for them and, and get them to help you pick a name. And maybe something in connection with Australia, since you have an Australian Labradoodle or something related to the name of the litter or mom and dad's names. Um, all of those types of things can go into your decision making process. Uh, it's, a, it's an important decision. So take your time uh, and then try it out for a while and uh, you can always change it. You've got lots of time still. So now let's go through the puppies and update you on what their weight is. And we are going to do these puppies in birth order. And number one is this handsome little guy here, this chocolate and white party boy who is blue collar boy. And Mr. Blue Collar Boy now weighs 340 grams. So that's not a huge amount more than he weighed when he was born, but you can see he has a very, very full plump tummy. There's no uh, lacking in groceries for this little dude here. And look at this. We always call this the Cindy Crawford beauty spot, but I don't think it's appropriate when you're a boy. So I'm not too sure uh, what man might have a, a beauty spot, if you will. So if you know, please put it in the comments and let me know, and uh, we'll use that term. Now, a couple of people have looked at the pattern on Blue's back and said, it looks like a woman who's praying. Uh, it is an interesting pattern, and it does look like a woman who's got something there, a tray, or she's praying. So this little guy has all sorts of super duper cool markings. And I should let you know we have three spots open in this litter. Goodness knows we were not expecting Rowan to give us nine puppies. Uh, so uh, if you would like to bring a puppy home, November the 16th is their going home date, uh, please reach out to us via email or go to our website and fill out an application <coughs> form. We would love to see one of these puppies uh, joining your family. Next we have Pink Collar Girl, who is also a party. And Pink Collar Girl is this gorgeous, maybe caramel, maybe apricot party. These colors she has right now are really beautiful, light blonde, but they are going to continue to darken. They're already darker than when she was born. She has them all down her back too. They're just a little bit lighter. And it looks like she's going to have that absolutely gorgeous look where this eye is going to be the beautiful caramel and this one's going to be the white face. 
So that is going to be very striking. Now the way we will know is if she's caramel or she's an apricot is if her pads and her lips and her nose are black or if they're brown. And right now they're pink and I can see a little bit of color coming on her nose. At the moment it looks like it's uh, going to be black but I'm not going to call it yet, it's too soon. So we're just gonna call her caramel for now. And Miss Pinky is 286 grams. These are petite puppies. These puppies are going to mature to 20 pounds and under. There's a couple maybe who might make it up to uh, more of Rowan's size. Rowan is 22 pounds. Um, still a beautiful, lovely mini size. Next we have yellow collar, and this is yellow collar here. Yellow collar is this gleaming ebony phantom, or she might be a sable. Mom is a sable, and mom was black when she was born, and sables clear out. So you can see now, um, if Re Reynolds doesn't mind, if we look at Rowan's color here, so you'll see she still has the black on the bottom of her ears, a little bit on the top and then of course she has these gorgeous black eyes and look at these lashes I mean who wouldn't kill for those and then we've got black up here around her neck and then much lighter as we go down the body and then more at the end of the tail and you see that little white tip there that's her little white spot there so this color has all cleared out she looked like this yellow collar puppy looks when she was a, a baby. So it's quite a transformation and quite a journey with the sable color. Now she also could be a phantom, which means that this puppy could be, which means she would stay looking like she is right now. So we're just gonna have to wait and see. It's going to be a surprise. But yellow collar is now, too much glare, 389 grams. Whoopsie, we don't want to do that. And at 389 grams, she is the biggest puppy in the litter. The smallest puppy in the litter is Miss Orange, Mr. Orange Collar, which will, yes, he is also a black. So we have the biggest one is an ebony and the smallest one is an ebony. There, is that okay? Thank you. Next we have Red Collar. Hey, go Red. Come here, sweetheart. Red collar girl. There we go. Now, you can see she's getting some color on her pads already. So when I look at these, these look to me like they're coming in brown. And so that means this little beauty is going to be a golden caramel. What a pretty puppy. Oh, she's really making sure that you see her paws there. That's her high five move. Hey, aren't you clever? Oh, that's so very clever. The Miss Red is 298 grams. So she's coming along nicely. She has a nice plump tummy as well. And uh, she is quite happy to show us that she's going to be a caramel. And she's going to show you her tongue there. Oh, she put it back in her mouth. She was sticking her tongue out at me. After that, we have Orange Collar Boy, our little guy in the litter. And he is the smallest of all. And look at how cute he is. Oh my goodness, I love this puppy. I can still fit him in just one hand. Gleaming ebony with beautiful classic white markings. This is one handsome dog. He is just so pretty. And he will stay black. This is not a sable. Uh, this is a, a regular black puppy. Very special ebony guy with all of his pretty white. Look at how his little goatee is shown off there. And Mr. Orange is 247 grams. Just a little tiny squirt there. This little puppy would be perfect for somebody who likes to travel with their puppy in the airplane cabin with them. Then we have Purple Collar Girl. Purpy, 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 where are you? Right here. Purple Collar Girl, again. Now you see she's different. She has black pads. So we know for sure that she is a red girl. She may be apricot, but see how she much darker she is already after just a week. And these puppies are six days old, by the way. They're not seven because we are doing this video a day early because we have our annual reunion tomorrow. So we are expecting over 70 people and about 40 dogs. So we'll be a little bit tied up tomorrow. So we wanted to get the video out for you without that interfering. This little girl is gonna be beautiful red and white puppy. She's just going to be a head turner for sure. I love the way her marking is on the top of her head.
And Miss Purple Collar Girl is 308 grams. So she's uh, one of the bigger puppies in the litter. And you can keep in mind that generally speaking, just because they're the biggest now doesn't mean they'll stay the biggest. And just because they're the smallest doesn't mean they'll stay the smallest. There are some defining features that I can say, oh yes, this will be a smaller puppy. And some that I can say, no, this looks like this puppy's going to catch up. So you just have to wait and see. Mr. Orange Collar though, does definitely present as a puppy who is going to stay on the smaller side. Then we have Green Collar. There we go. Hello, sweetheart. Green color girl. She is also a party. And again, we don't have any indication yet as to whether she's going to be an apricot, a red, or a caramel. Uh, because she's got pink nose and pink feet and pink lips so far. No indication at all. Pretty, pretty girl. She's got markings on both sides of her head, unlike her sister. And Miss Green is 358 grams. So as well, she's one of the, the larger puppies. There you go. And then we have Silver Collar. Silver Collar is back here hiding. <laughs> this is Silver Collar's favorite place uh, where you will almost always find her way back here underneath Mummy's hind legs. And this little girl is a sable. There is no doubt about it. She's a chocolate sable. So that means her color is going to change a little bit. Uh, she will become probably a little bit more of a red color in there. Uh, sort of a little bit closer to what her points are right now. But she will always have a chocolate uh, color to her. Just a little tiny squirt this one. Miss Silver is 254 grams. And so she's really just hardly bigger than her brother Orange. That's a little one, and she does also still fit in one hand. Yes, she's just a tiny one. And we'll put her back in her favorite place here. There you go. There you go, and you'll be all cozy. And last but not least, we have her sister Brown Collar, who is nursing, sorry. There we go. Exactly the same. She is also a chocolate sable. It's identified by this line down their back. She's got some white going on under her chin there. And this girl is 379 grams. So she is very close to yellow collar, who's the biggest at 389 grams. Not much difference there between those two. And you can see she, she I can hold her in one hand, but she doesn't fit in one hand. She spills out. And we're gonna put her back here where she can have a little bit more to eat because she was having a good time there. And that's all the puppies and that's our update for this week. I hope you enjoyed it and once again we do have three spots open. We'd love to hear from you if you're interested in adding one of these incredible non-shedding puppies to your family. Uh, they're very athletic and adaptable uh, whether you live in a small urban spot and you're retired and perhaps just like strolling in the neighborhood or if you are a young single person and you like going for more strenuous hikes and paddle boarding, one of these puppies will be able to fit that bill for you. We will match them to you properly. Great with kids uh, and just lovely because their mummy and their daddy are just amazing. We hope we see you again for week two, uh, which will be in eight days. And we look forward to seeing you then. And let's see if we have any eyes open then. Thanks so much for watching.